Happy Maker Monday, everybody. We are working on a project in honor of our anniversary this week. So we are five years old as of yesterday. And so we thought it would be fun to combine our <clears throat> Maker Monday demo tips and tricks session with something that was monkey themed because monkeys. <clears throat> so if you have been wanting to do a Fiberworks um, collage, a Laura Heine collage project. I love her patterns. Her techniques are really great and fun to fun to use and are kind of easy success type projects. I'm going to show you a couple of my my own personal tips and things that I like to do to make collage projects. Most of them are straight out of the way that she teaches you how to do it. Incidentally, if you want to have a nice little reference book or reference um, project for doing a Laura Heine um, collage pattern, she makes this little Laura's little book of, it's called Laura's little book of collage. And it's literally just a reference tool, not only on a lot of her patterns, but some, some of her own tips and tricks that she likes. There's a couple of products that I like a little bit differently than she does, but often for the same reasons. So this is available on our website. This is a great little reference tool to have if you like to do collage quilts. But the project that we're going to focus on today is this tiny little eight inch block that's called whatever's monkey business. It's monkeys. It's not only monkeys, but it is only eight inches big. So you're not working on these giant projects. Incidentally, if you're going to work on the giant ones, there's a few extra tips and tricks that you're going to want to do a little bit differently. But since this is such a small little one, you can kind of play and see if you like it. So we've made up kits to go with this. We'll talk about those at the end of the video. This is a comment sold video. All of the listings of the things that I'm using are listed above my head. If you're watching in the app, it's down below. At the end of the video, I'll give you the stock numbers and everything so that you can order right in this video. You can always go over to our, take those stock numbers over to our website and order them there. Um, but we, um, we try to make it easy for you. So if you want to order on this video, you type the word sold space, the number that's in the parentheses above my head for which item you want and hit enter. If you want more than one, do that twice. So if you want two pens, say, um, you're going to type sold space number enter and hit that twice. Okay. All right, business is out of the way. Let's have fun. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for the way that I like to, to do this process. The first thing I suggest, um, the pattern, this particular pattern is written on one sheet of paper. So it's a, that's why it's an inexpensive pattern. It's not very big. It's just one sheet of paper. So you open it out. The pattern is on the inside. Now, y'all know I'm a big fan of copyright. I will get on that soapbox all day long. Do not make a copy of this and give it to your friend. Do not take a copy of this and put it on the internet. Laura took her time and effort and energy and skill set to design this. That being said, the, pat the directions are written one side, the pattern sheet is on the inside. Since I like to use a light box, when I put this on the light box, you can see the words through it. If you take this to Kinko's and ask them to make you a copy, because this says do not copy, they are going to politely fold it up and hand it back to you and say no. I made a copy of this for my own use and for one specific reason. And when I'm done, my copy will go straight into the trash. The reason I made a copy of this, and you can't see it on the camera, but I will show you on the, on the light box, is the words come through and then it's harder to see the picture. Okay, so I'm going to take my camera over to my light box so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, this is my light box. I absolutely adore this light box. Not only is it very lightweight and plugs into the wall, it, you can adjust the light to whatever brightness you need. So it gets really, really soft or it gets really bright. When I lay the pattern on here and I want to see the design, the other colors come through. If you're not using a light box, this might not be an issue for you. So I made one single copy of this so that I could see it on my light box. That is the only reason this will immediately go in the garbage as soon as I'm done making this project. Um, 
But look how cool this box is. So as I just touch the button, it changes to be exactly whatever brightness I need for what I'm going to do. Like it is like bright as the sun that hurts my eyes. So I trade it out to be wherever I need it to be. When you're working on bigger collage quilts, you're going to want to put this on a substrate. I like to use Floriani Tearaway Medium. You can use Pattern Ease. Um, that's what Laura recommends is Pattern Ease because it's a really lightweight fibrous paper that you can build this on top of. Since we are simply making this one structure, it's one block, there's not a whole bunch of layers and I'm not moving large pieces around, I will simply take my background piece and lay it on top of my light box and I'll trace out where my tree placements are going to go. So, for instance, now see how when I make my light brighter, I can see it now. So I'll take, a, I'll take probably a friction pen and just trace out the, the loose layout of where my tree goes. Okay, so we're gonna put our background to the side. Here's my tips for working with the fusible. Now I like to use Aplastic. Laura recommends Steamacine too. Um, I also, you know, for years use Steamacine too. I like that as well. I like Aplastic just a little bit better because it doesn't gum up my needle as much. But it has the same features that Steam Seam has in that it's tacky and repositionable, and I'll show you about that in a minute. So what I've done is I've traced out the big pieces on my pattern. So by big pieces, I mean here's my tree. So the big part of my tree, I've drawn out the solid lines. My tree is going to go under everything else. So what I did was I drew out all the solid lines that make my tree, and then I made little dotted lines that connect those spaces because if you look at my pattern here's my tree shape right there's this big bulbous tree shape but then here's the monkey and there's some leaves and there's um, some flowers I don't need to cut around the monkey because the tree can go underneath the monkey so I'm just gonna make one big bulbous shape for my tree shape then I also took the other side of my steam -a seam and I did the same thing and traced out my tree trunk those are my big pieces that I'm going to use. Then I can use the rest of my apple stick to make my other shapes. There's two ways you can do this because I've given you a lot of extra fabric in your kit. This is going to be your background piece. This blue fabric is your background piece. This green piece is going to make your tree. So this is going to be the background for your tree. Then what you have is some birdies. So I gave you, let me turn this off. So I gave you fabric that you could cut out different birdies and different little flowers. You can use these leaves if you want to. This is kind of a no two are gonna be the same kind of project because I gave you lots of fabric that you could play lots of ways in. So here's your tree trunk is the brown. Then I gave you these sort of tropical big bird of paradise leaves. And I did that because you could either cut out the flower or you could cut out the leaves or you could cut out both. So we're going to do that as well. And I like the roundness of these flowers because the picture in the pattern has your green tree back here, but then all these different little leaves and flowers and curly cues and, and whatnot. So I used this fabric for not only my round circles, but also for my vines and my curly cues. And then you can't have a tree full of monkeys without the monkeys. I give you a big enough piece of this fabric that honestly you could make two of these if you wanted to because each of you should have at least six monkeys on your piece of piece of paper or your piece of fabric so you can have a black monkey a yellow monkey um, a brown monkey you can change your monkeys out however you like and i also like that this fabric has extra little viney leaves that you can use to make your collage okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to make your tree and i'm going to show you how to cut out your shapes Okay, so we're going to talk tips on um, fusing down your apple stick. I have loosely cut out both my tree and my tree trunk. Okay, and I fused it onto the fabric on the wrong side of the fabric that I want to use. Loose, loosely cut around the edge because once you fuse it, then you want to cut around on the line. There's no reason to cut it out all nice and neat on here because you're just going to have to cut it again. Um, a couple of tips. What I do, especially when I'm ironing larger things, this stuff likes an iron that's warmer than cooler. Okay, so I turn the heat up on my iron just a little bit. 
I press it from the paper side first to get it to kind of, you know, to stick down. Then I flip it and I iron it on the other side. That's going to make sure that the fusible is really stuck to your project. The other thing that I want to talk about is I used a Micron Pigma pen to mark my stuff, to mark my lines on my Apple stick. You can use a Sharpie, but what I find with a Sharpie is if you touch it when you're making it, it smears it and then it gets on your fingers and then it can get on your fabric. But this is a pigment pen, so it will go right on and you can iron over it and it doesn't smear, okay? So we have fused down our tree. Now we're gonna start talking about fussy cutting these shapes. You don't have to draw out the shapes on the paper for this because the shape is on the fabric. So um, I really dig this monkey because he's wearing a rainbow shirt and he's got some sunglasses on. So from the back side of my fabric, here's my monkey that I want. From the back side of my fabric, I'm going to put a piece of apple stick down. I wanna make sure I cover my entire monkey. Then I'm going to fuse it. Now, if you know that you wanna do this monkey and this monkey and you wanna get these leaves, just cover the whole thing. Cover anything that you wanna to, want to use. I'm just using this as an example of how to choose what you're gonna cut. So I've got that stuck down, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna iron it from the fabric side. I'm gonna do this with all of the elements that I think I might wanna use. Uh, hot tip, you're gonna change your mind in the middle process of this and you're gonna say, you know what, I think maybe I want this monkey instead. So when you cut this out, try to be careful about where you cut it because maybe when you get it all done, you just want this leaf right here. So try not to hack away at your fabric as much as you can and save whatever bits and pieces that you think you're gonna use. Now, if you have a fabric that you can't see well through, like most of these you can see the shape too. You can go ahead and put your light box back down. Don't iron on this. But you can put your light box back down and then you can see the pattern better. So, um, I'm pretty sure I want this bird. So I can find out where he is. I can line up my piece of fusible. If you're afraid that you're gonna get fusible on something, fold it back where you know you don't need any more and then you can just cut it with scissors. So you can make the shape of whatever you want. If you're afraid that you might waste some fusible, we can get around that. So now that's just covering my little bird. I can take my light box away and fuse down my bird, okay? So if you find that you're having a hard time seeing through the fabric, pick up your light box and then that'll make it a whole lot easier. Just uh, remember to move your light box before you iron on it. All right, so now we've got a couple of elements that we're going to use. I'm going to fuse down some more, and then we're going to talk about cutting them out. Okay, so we're starting to cut out our shapes. Karen K. Buckley makes the perfect scissors for this project. The reason for that is, one, they're easy to hold on to. They're long and skinny. They're serrated, which means when you cut out this sticky stuff, the sticky doesn't get stuck to your um, scissors, and it doesn't dull them. So when I'm cutting out shapes, especially things with curves... I like to cut into my design, keep my scissors straight, and turn the fabric. So I made those little dotted lines, remember? So I'm just gonna cut right around those dotted lines because they're just sort of reference points. They don't have to be perfect. They really just need to get me from here to here where this is a solid line again. Now these scissors come in, I'm gonna show you all three sizes. I like the larger ones because I like to make long, sort of sweeping cuts. If you're a snipper, you might like the smaller scissors. Ironically, DJ likes the medium sized scissors, which is weird because his hands are really big, but he likes to take smaller cuts. So I always use the purple scissors and he always uses the blue ones. Now this tree runs off the top of the block, so I just sort of made a connecting line here. But if you turn the fabric instead of the scissors, you get a smoother cut, okay? So I've cut out my tree and I've cut out my branches and they still have the sticky stuff on the back. Here's my next tip. The pattern, because we traced the pattern onto the apple stick, here's my pattern, okay? You can read the words. So I've cut out my tree, but look what happens. It reverses the image. 
doesn't really matter on a project like this because it doesn't matter if the monkey's on the right or on the left, but if that freaks you out and you want to line this up, this is another reason that I like having a clean copy, I can flip it over. So I flip the pattern over and I just took my friction pen and loosely traced out the tree and where the tree branches go onto my background fabric. This is where that adjustable light comes in really handy because I can turn the light up really high and then I can really see it through the printed fabric. Okay, so now I can take my pattern out and take away my light box. And now I've got my tree and it's just loosely, loosely stuck on here so that I, I know basically where to put the tree. For this particular project, it doesn't matter that much. I, but I do want to make sure that this branch is in the right place and, you know, the pl general placement of my tree is correct. Okay, now, the first thing I'm going to want to lay down is the tree part of my tree. So the, the green part of my tree. Um, I hear people complain a lot that, that when they're trying to get the paper off the back, they end up fraying the edge. And that's true because if you start picking at the corner of this with your fingernail, it's going to fray it a little bit. But if you take a straight pin and you score it down the middle, it just sort of rips through the paper. And then if you bend it, the paper separates from the sticky and the paper just peels off really easily. So it's like taking a label off of a sticker. You know how not that a few years ago they started putting that little break in the middle of stickers so that you didn't pick away the corner. Same idea, but you're making the little break in your sticker. So I've got my paper off. This is tacky. See, it's sticky. It's not super sticky though. It's just, it's like post-it note sticky. So it's going to, I'm going to lay my tree down. And I'm just sort of going to roughly copy those layout points that I had. And I'm not going to iron her yet. I'm just going to kind of stick it down. So now it's stuck to the background. It's on there. I've got my tree trunk. Now I cut this tree branch because I wanted the striations to go the other way. And I can barely see where this tree trunk is supposed to stick out there. I left a little bit of extra fabric on that so it could tuck underneath here. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to peel this off. Since I have a loose end, I can just take it off. Now the reason I didn't iron this down was, all right, maybe I forgot where that's gonna go. So I can peel this up and I can kind of look at it and go, oh, okay, it goes like right here. And I can peel this up again. And yeah, that's about the right spot that that goes to. Now this is, ta this is sticky too. So I can just stick that on top. And then I'm gonna take my pin again and I'm gonna score my tree and peel this paper off. Then I can put my tree trunk where she kind of goes. Now I gave you a little bit wider piece of fabric than what you have to have for this project so that you could trim it down after you were done. That's up to you, okay? So I'm gonna lay my tree down, get all my pieces lined up. Everything looks happy, right? Okay, so there's that. Now, since this is the first layer of your project, you could fuse this right now so that this wouldn't come away. If that makes you nervous, you don't have to. The other option you have, now that you know what size your tree is going to be, let me show you this. This is a goddess sheet. So you can build your entire design right here on this goddess sheet. You can make the whole tree so like if I don't want to keep this on the background, now I know what my tree looks like because I don't need to reference it anymore. I can put the tree on the goddess sheet. Now I can fold the sheet in half. No steam. We have not used steam yet. And since this is a, a lift away sheet, I can press this and not worry if fusible is coming out from underneath the edges because this is a you know this is silicone so the sticky will come right off of here I'm gonna let it cool because it does get hot under the iron so we're gonna let her cool off and then we can peel this up as one solid tree okay so what we did was we fused 
the pieces of the tree into one piece. Okay, so now our tree is all one piece. Now, if you choose to, you can build the rest of your things right here on the tree. Again, since this is such a small project, you're probably safe now taking your tree, sticking it on the background of your fabric. And she's still sticky because we use the goddess sheet to press her. She's still sticky, so you could put her down here as well. Okay? Now, the only thing that's left to do in the collaging process, when you're working on those larger collages, I highly recommend building everything on that goddess sheet because a lot of times you have layer after layer and shape after shape that you want to build, and then you want to take that particular element over to your background. Now, let's look at a couple of things. We want to, if we're going to sew this to something else, we want to make sure we have a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. I gave you pieces, or I make mine oversize a little bit, and then I trim it down after I've done all the things, especially for this particular project, because this project, I'm only going to have this one block, and I'm going to quilt it as one block. But I want to make sure I have something to trim all the way around. So she's a little off-centered. I could move the whole thing over if I wanted to. That's entirely up to you. But do keep in mind that if you're going to sew this to something else, you need to make sure you have your quarter-inch seam allowance all the way around. I'm going to quilt this and then trim it down to size. Now, what we're going to do after that is I've taken my pieces that we have put our fusible on. So like, let's, um, let's cut out our monkey because that's a pretty straightforward shape. So I'm gonna cut out my cool monkey right here. Same thing, I'm gonna use my, my um, scissors. I think I'm gonna keep that flower, because it's kind of cute. And if I don't like it, I can always cut it off later. So I'm gonna cut around him. Just so that he's easier to maneuver. Now, depending on your pattern, you might use them like this if you want a white background. I kind of want to get rid of the white because I just want to see the monkey and I want to see the monkey in the tree. So I'm going to use my scissors and just trim all the white around. Here's my next tip. I cut out the big pieces around the edges first. Then I go in after the fact, after I don't have as much to work with and trim away the inside pieces because it's just easier to maneuver. If you have to cut from both ways, that's okay too. If you feel like it's too hard to turn that whole block, this one I want to keep those little the little flowery bits as much as I can. So there's going to be a little bit of white in the background, but I don't care. It's cute. Okay, so we're just going to trim all of these pieces around here. Now, I'm going to tell you what I've done in the past. I get excited, and then I cut right through that stem. Oh well. He doesn't have to hold that flower. You can cut it out. There's no mistakes. There's just happy accidents. Thank you, Bob Ross, for teaching me that as a kid. Okay. So we're just going to cut all the way around our little monkey here. And we'll clean him up a little bit later better. Now, this is the part where you might want to have some finer scissors. So if you've got some snips in your arsenal, um, or you have things that help you get really fine cuts, that's great. I do, I can get pretty close up in, in here with these big scissors, but it's just a matter of your technique. However you get there is the right way to go. I don't use the tips of my scissors, typically. I usually use the middle part, and I just turn the fabric. I'm gonna get rid of that other flower because I just want the leaf. Again, there is no mistakes. And if I get to the point where get this all done, I'm like, you know what, I don't want that leaf. I can cut it off. It's okay. Nobody cares. And you know what? Nobody's gonna know your design process when you get to the end, okay? So now I got a monkey. I wanna get rid of as much of this white as I can because he's kind of the featured, you know, he's kind of the star of this show. I don't want the white to take away from him. Now, if I was putting him on a white background, it wouldn't matter so much. But look at how cute his little pink feet are. I'm going to cut out around here, too. 
Now as another little tip, I like to use tweezers sometimes when I'm doing this because my fingers get in the way and you know, I'm clumsy, see that cut? Um, so I'm a little bit dangerous. So I try to remove sharp things from myself as much as I possibly can. Okay, so now we've got a monkey with some flowers in his hands. I'm gonna do the same thing with these other, um, these other things that I've made. So like this fabric here, I know that I'm probably gonna use quite a bit of this fabric, not only because it's got lots of colors on one sheet, but there's also these great little viney bits, okay? So the flowers that were in our sample were really round. So I can just cut around the circle of this flower. Now, another thing I do when I make these, I'll put the fusible on these on the back of the fabric and then I'll just sit there and like watch TV and cut out shapes. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes they just go in a bucket for a, a future project. And that's okay because there's been times that I've cut out shapes for stuff and I hate it once I go to put it on there. So I just save it for later. And since this particular pattern had swirly bits and kind of has vines in the design, just make your vines out of this. It doesn't have to look like a vine. These are all flowers, but I'm gonna cut a vine shape from it. Okay, now again, this is why we put the fusible on before, because sometimes you're gonna have really tiny pieces like this. And now the fusible is glued all the way to the end. So I'm gonna take my tree, now that I've got my tree built. You can use the photo as a reference if you like. So like, you know, this one in, in the one that Laura made, she's got a monkey hanging out over here. I'll probably cut out one of those to hang out down here. I might even put two down here on the ground. I don't really know. But for this guy, I'm gonna make him one of the ones that's hanging from the trees here, okay? So, I think I'm gonna put him right about here. I think that's a good spot for him to live. I'm gonna take my pin, like I did in the past, if I can find it, it is missing. Nope, I put it away. Okay, I'm gonna score him, just like I did with the other ones. Peel off the paper. And if you score the middle and then pull it outward, you'll get the smaller pieces off that way. Okay, and if you, and instead of peeling it back like that, peel it up. Okay, so the up tug will pull away from the fabric instead of pull the fabric towards you. Okay, so we'll throw all that away. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna iron any of this. I'm just gonna start sticking him in, in trees. And I'm just gonna stick him here in this tree because I want the tree to kind of stick out from behind him. I want him to kind of look like he's swinging. And then I'm gonna take other all these other little shapes. So see how in the pattern we've got all these flowers and vines and stuff? So if I take my vine flower, score the largest part that you have, peel paper away. These smaller ones, it takes a little bit longer because they're so tiny and you don't wanna pick at those because then they definitely fray. But again, even with that being super small, if I just pull it up, the whole thing comes off. So what she's got here in her sample is she's got little vines just sort of hanging off the trees. They're kind of just going everywhere. And then on top of the vines, she's put flowers and more vines and she's kind of covered most of the tree in flowers, which I think is kind of cool because usually a tree is not all flowers, but you can make it a flowery tree. So you can put this flower here, you could put it here, you can put it all around anywhere you want. So I'm gonna cut flowers out of all my different fabric. She's even made some of the flowers come up off the floor. She's got a little butterfly in here. You can add anything you want. So we're just gonna keep layering on top of this until we get something we like. Okay, so I've got, I think I've got enough stuff in my tree now. Um, I've stuck everything down. Some things are upside down um, and turned and, you know, changed a little bit. But I'm gonna pick it up and see who's not stuck. These two monkeys aren't stuck. 
everybody else is, is, stuck, is stuck down there. So um, one extra tip I don't think I mentioned before, when you're scratching the back of your stuff, even if it's small, even if you just have one of those little vines, take the pin and scratch all the way off. So if you scratch all the way off the piece, then you can pull it right off to the end. So when you're pulling these small things apart, that is very helpful. All right, so now he's sticky. We're gonna put him in this tree here. So see how some of my branches are kind of just hanging out there in the middle of nowhere? I knew I was gonna put my monkey on top of them, so that's okay. So I'm gonna make my monkey look like his little hands are holding onto that branch and stick him down. And then where'd my other monkey go? This monkey is either dabbing or hailing an Uber, I'm not sure which. So he needs to be on the ground. And of course, my tree had to have five monkeys. Three wasn't going to cut it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five monkeys. I added a little bird over here and there's a little bird sitting in this tree and there's a bird there. So now everything's stuck down. It's not permanently stuck down though. So here's my, my last set of tips. Well, not last, but next set. When you iron this, you've got fusible on top of fusible, it's everywhere. You're gonna to wanna to use your goddess sheet again. You only need to use the one side now because you're not trying to create a, um, a piece. So we're just gonna lay this on top of our design. And just kind of slowly moving our iron around, fusing everything down. Okay, you want to make this so that if there's anything that's flipped over, I've done this before and gone and pressed my whole sheet and I picked my sheet up and something was the other way and now it's stuck to my sheet instead of to my fabric. So I can peel it off and fix it, but at least it's not stuck to the bottom of my iron. Okay, so theoretically now everybody should be stuck down. Oh, I had one other tip I wanted to share with you guys. So I really like in the design how she has those swirly curly, curly Q type things. None of the fabrics that I chose really lent itself to the curly cues. I worked around it and did other things, but if you want to have that shape, but the shape isn't in your fabric, just make the shape. So I took my light, my light box and my pattern and I took my fusible and I laid it on top of the pattern and I traced out this shape right here. Okay. Now I'm not going to cut that apart yet because I want to put it on my fabric. So I have fused it to the back of my fabric. Then I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to make the shape I want out of the color that I want instead of cutting out the shape that's printed on the fabric. So if you get stuck and you're like, oh, I really want to make this shape, but I can't find a piece of fabric that has that shape on it. Maybe you want to Maybe you want a heart shape or you want a specific shape of a flower and you can't find that particular flower. Find the color of the flower that you want. Draw the pattern either from your design um, inspiration or from your own little head. And then cut the shape out. You want to rough cut out your shape, iron it onto the fabric that you want to choose and then cut out whatever you're going to make. So I'm not gonna cut every detail of this out, but now, now I want you to see that curly cue. Now you've got the shape that you want out of the color that you want, and you didn't have to find that exact same fabric, that exact correct fabric that made the thing that you want. Sometimes you have to think outside the box, but once you realize that the box is really big, you can probably find something that's going to work. Okay, now oh, I lost it, where'd it go? Oh, I cut it off because I dropped the camera. Oh well. Um, where did it, I just completely lost the whole thing. Oh, there it is, <laughs> I found it. So you can make the shape that you want out of fabric you already have. So you still have your cute little curly cue that you can add to your tree if you want to out of that fabric that you have. Okay, so next tip. We've got all of our stuff ironed down, but it's she's a little stiff. It's not bad, you could totally quilt through this, but it's a little stiff. Now is when you wanna turn on your steam, okay? So we're gonna turn our steam on 
and we're going to iron the whole thing with steam. So, the fusible that's in this product has silicone in it. That's why it doesn't gum up your needle quite so bad as some other things. But it also allows the steam, the water and the steam to activate with the glue. And if you steam it really well, then she becomes a lot softer, okay? And you can do it from both sides. Incidentally, this is the thing that makes steam a seam work too. We forget that steam is in the title of steam a seam. So if you're making something with steam a seam instead of apple stick, and you forget the steaming step, and then you go to quilt it, you can quilt it, but it's not going to be as supple as if you steam it. You're also going to have more glue gumming situation than you probably want. But now that I have steamed her, she's pretty soft and flexible. Okay. Now, the last tip. People ask me all the time, well, all right, now I've made this, how do I quilt it? Uh, the answer is any way you want. I know that's not helpful. You can, if you want to practice your free motion quilting, this might be a good time to just go around the things and stitch them down. However, if you plan on using this um, in something that's going to get washed at some point, I highly recommend just straight stitch quilting it and stitching it close together. Okay, so if you look at most of Laura's designs and patterns and you look really closely at the picture, most of them are matched at quilted. So they're, they're stitches just close together. Bonus tip, um, if you put a single layer of tulle over the top of this, which is what I'm going to do in a second so I can show you the quilting um, part, and because if you're worried that, and, and I, in fact I left a piece open on purpose, I left, this isn't glued down. Okay, and I left it like this on purpose so I could demo this in the quilting. If you have stuff that's maybe not sticking down or where you missed glue, that layer of tool is going to hold that all down in the quilting process. All right, so I'm going to set up my, my um, machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so for the quilting part of this, I'm going to put mine in a frame because I want to keep it as sort of a memento from our anniversary party. I'm going to use my walking foot. I have fused one layer of fusible fleece on the back. This is a piece of bridal tool. So it's super thin, super fine, and I even picked up, it's not even a white piece, it's a gray piece. But I wanted to prove the point that the tool is so fine that you really can't even see it. Okay, it doesn't take away from anything, but what it is gonna do is it's gonna, so that piece that I could pick up before, that I could scratch up with my fingernail. Look, I can't get it anymore. It's just enough of a layer to hold everything down. So if you have some things that aren't glued down perfectly or you're afraid might lift up, that's gonna hold it there. I'm a little bit extra, so I'm gonna use a shiny gray embroidery thread to quilt this. And I'm just gonna put this where you can see it. I am not going to quilt this to death because I'm gonna put it in a frame. So, um, I'm not even gonna mark lines on this because honestly, I don't care if they're straight. I'm just gonna take and do stitches. Now, here's my other thing. I increase my length of my stitch just a little bit because I don't want the thread to be overwhelming. And I'm just gonna straight stitch up and down my project. What I usually do with this is about every inch or so in either direction, I stitch a line. I stitch from the top to the bottom and then from the bottom to the top and vice versa because I don't want to make my project bow at all. So I'm just doing some very basic quilting here. Up and down, both, so, both top and bottom, and then I'll go side to side. I like to do nice wide stitching because I can always add more quilting. If you do really tight lines right next to each other right from the get-go and then you decide that it's too much, it's really hard to take it out. But if you do just a little bit at a time, you can just keep adding until you are done. Okay, so I'm gonna finish quilting this up really quick and then I'll show you the end. All right, so now I'm done with my quilting. 
see how the sides kind of curve up a little bit it doesn't lay perfectly flat anymore um, but another hot tip since you put usable fleece underneath if you take your steam iron back to it again and just go over it with another layer of steam everything's going to lay nice and flat okay. so my project's done now we just need to trim her up all right now i'm trimming mine down to eight and a half inches i'm pretty sure the frame i have to put this in is a nine inch square i have to go find it but i want to make sure that i'm getting rid of all my rough edges and that i'm keeping at least a quarter inch seam allowance around the edge Mine's going in a frame, so the quarter inch isn't quite as critical, but if I was going to sew a border around this, and I might end up doing that if my frame actually turns out to be a 12 inch square, I can't remember what it is, then I might have to do that. But I'm going to trim all my sides down. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. Okay. And I'm going to do all four sides of my block. The reason I want to do this is I want to have a really smooth edging to it, whether I'm going to bind it, or I'm going to frame it, or I'm going to sew it onto something else, this way you have a really nice squared up block. There's our, market, our monkey business block. All right, so let's talk about the products that we used. Okay, so who's ready to make a collage? I think everybody should try it. I think it's a whole lot of fun. You can get really creative with it, rhinestones and embroidery and, and all kinds of fun things, okay? So the products that we use, the things that are listed above your head if you're in Facebook, the things that are listed down below if you're in the app are in order of example. So the first thing we have is the kit to actually make the project, which comes with the pattern, all of the fabric, the fusible, and just for funsies, I threw in a piece of the tool for you to play with the quilting on it. Um, that is number 111571. So that's the project itself. Remember, this is specific to our store. And it is, um, when they're gone, they're gone. We made enough for our anniversary celebration. And so it's going to be sort of a, hey, thanks for being our customer kind of deal. All right. So it's a really good price on that kit as well. Next, you're going to want some apple stick. It comes either in a roll. This roll is number 101355. This is quite a bit of a of a of a roll of product. I think there's 25 yards on this. 10 it's 12 inches wide. There's 10 yards. So you can do quite a bit with this project. This also comes in a box that has 25 yards on it. So if you really like doing applique or collage, I highly re recommend getting the box. By the time you do the math, you save a lot of money. All right, so number 101, well, number 101355 is a 12 inch roll of apple stick. This comes in tape, it comes in the big box, it also comes in sheets. So if you don't like working with the roll and rolling the roll out, or you want to print your pieces directly onto this, so you can put the pattern in your copier or your printer, copy this and print it directly onto these apple stick sheets. Make sure that you have the shiny side of the paper up, that that's the side that's gonna get printed on because the other side is the fusible. Okay, so this is kind of another thing that makes apple stick stand out. You can print right from your pattern onto this. So number 101354 is the apple stick sheets. These are eight and a half by 11, so they go right through any normal um, printer, or you can use them just by the sheet. So if you just don't like dealing with a roll and you like the sheet, this is another option. This one has 25 sheets in per package. I love that stuff. Next, you're going to want some Karen K. Buckley scissors. Now, the question is, what size do you want? The answer to that is, sometimes it just depends on the project. I've had my, the ones I used in the video, these here, I have had these for probably 10 years. They're still sharp. I still use them all the time. These are the largest ones though. So number 102796 is the big purple handles. They all come with a shield, which of course I lost mine a long time ago. Um, but this is really handy because they are really pointy on the end. So if you want to throw them in a bag or something, the cover is really nice. Number 102796 are the Karen K. Buckley scissors in the large size. 
They also come in this medium size. This is probably a better size for my hands because my hands aren't very big. This is the size that DJ likes. Even though he has really big hands, he likes, he, he you know, he just puts two fingers through anyway. He likes how long the blade is. He finds that more maneuverable um, for the projects that he does. Number 102182 is the Karen K. Buckley's in medium. So you can see the size comparison. It's a pretty, it's a pretty decent jump. If you really want to do some fine detail cutting, or you if you're the kind of person that is more likely to use a pair of snips, this might be the way you want to go. You can still put two fingers through each side. They open really nice and smooth. They still have a guard, but they have a really tiny blade to them. So you can do some really detailed cutting with this one. This is number 102319. These are a handy to have just in any toolkit too. All right, so those are the three sizes of the Karen K. Buckley Perfect Scissors. Those are the serrated sizes. She has other ones too that are not serrated. The serrated is what you want for um, when you're working with fusible sticky stuff. The other thing we talked about was a goddess sheet. This is important when you're doing collage because it can get a little bit messy. I use my goddess sheet for all kinds of stuff. I like this size for this project because like I showed in the video where we folded it in half and you can work in between the two sides. You can also open it up and lay it flat so to use a bigger piece, but I like the two-sided thing so then you can build on it. You don't have to have fabric underneath. You can just have um, the goddess sheet underneath one side and the iron on the other side so you don't have to worry about where your fusible is going. So this is the 16 and a half by 10 and a half inch sheet. It's folded in half like a book. This is number 102319. Then we talked about our handy dandy light box. This light box, I'm just going to show you the size of the one we use today. I'm going to unplug her first. This light box is the, which size is this? This is the 12 and a half by 9 inch size. This is really handy for just about anybody's studio. It's not so large that it takes up too much space. It's very easy to store because it's so thin. The cord detaches so that you don't have to worry about this getting all tangled up. You can actually unplug this and store it flat. But look how thin it is, it weighs nothing. This is the 12 and a half by nine inch size. I do have a larger, I wanna say it's 17 by 13 on our website. But this is a nice portable size. It's a nice size for anybody's studio. The number is 106794. And then the last thing I wanted to share that I haven't, I don't think I've shared on a video before was the Micron pen. So what makes this pen different? Do not confuse this with your friction pen. It has the exact opposite value. This will not come off, like at all. It's on there. Like it's more on there than um, say a Sharpie marker. The reason these work differently is because they are not ink, they are pigment. So the alcohol that is blended in for ink, the alcohol evaporates away, the ink is dry, it stays on there. It's also the thing that makes it not as permanent. Micron pens are pigment. They're actually archival. You can use them for all kinds of things. Um, artists like them a lot because they make a nice fine line and they don't smear, okay? So I am showing you the 0.2 millimeter option today. They come in three sizes. We have them all on our website, but this is the black Micron pen. The number is 102620, all right? So that is everything I wanted to show you guys today. I also want to express my extreme gratitude for the last five years and how we have made a lot of friends. We have made um, not only customers, but I like to call them um, custom friends because you guys have definitely become not only part of our business, but part of our family. Thank you very much for trusting us and letting us enable you <laughs> Uh, every day for some of you. That's really nice. It's a, it's a great honor to me as a individual to be able to support your habit and help you learn as much as possible. So I hope you celebrate with us all week. We have something different happening every day. So I hope to see you all week long. Have a nice night.